Porte casuna con usted marreta. Na cupulella che vi si era aizzata. Passa scampanianna per... Sono tornato. What's up? What's happening? What's going on, guys? And welcome back to another episode of the Fish and Films Movie Reviews. I'm Matt Fish Fischioni, and welcome to the one and the only talk show where we talk, review, and recommend movies. Thank you all for joining me for a very special episode. You guys thought it was done this year, right? Nope. That ain't the case because, like I said before, I'm here in Florence, Italy, studying abroad for three and a half months, which means I will be giving you guys exclusive field packages right here in Florence, in Rome. No matter where I go, you guys are going to come along with me. So thank you all for joining me. And we're going to start off today's episode with traditional talk on upcoming movies. And the first movie we're going to be talking about is a movie that's coming out on March 18th, and that is A Quiet Place Part 2. Came all the way up here. There's nothing left. <laughs> now, guys, to be honest, I really wasn't a huge fan of the first Quiet Place. What I did like was the idea of you have to be quiet throughout the entire movie in order to keep yourself safe from the monsters. That was good storytelling, and I loved how it was the suspense was built throughout the entire movie from beginning to end. That being said, I felt like the movie was a bit overrated. Now, I understand why people would want to defend themselves and how they would say that the first Quiet Place was really, really good. That's just my honest opinion. I feel like part two is going to be way, way better than part one. We have Emily Blunt's character and her children to travel to areas to their hometown that they may not even seen or meet people that they haven't even seen before. And I feel like the overall suspense and the feel is gonna be much more creepier than the first one. So I'm hoping to enjoy it just as much as you guys will. Now, over here in Italy, we have Netflix. As you scroll down to the movies and TVs, it is a big upgrade than what we have here in the US, so much better. But a movie that I came across is something that a lot of people told me to go see, but I never really got the chance to. So for you guys, I'm gonna be reviewing a film that two years ago, won the Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay, and that is Call Me By Your Name. The movie takes place in the summer of the 1980s, and it is set in northern Italy. The movie follows a boy named Elio, who starts to fall in love with his father's intern from the United States, Oliver. And soon, they get to know each other, they become friends, and they start to know things about themselves that they haven't even discovered yet, and they have a little special bond. When a lot of people told me to go see this movie, I really wasn't sure what to think. I felt like dur during the viewings of the trailers, I felt like this wasn't my kind of movie. That being said, this movie was absolutely beautiful to experience, but also to look at. It is a beautifully shot film, amazing cinematography, great color palette. It is so vibrant and very colorful to look at. And it makes you feel like you were there in Italy. If you're someone who has actually been there, you know the sights, you know the smells, you know the overall feel. This is a movie where you are actually going to jump onto the screen and you're going to be there with these characters. And wow, performances by both of them. These two really had some magic together. The way that they interacted with each other and the way that they were performing, it felt like that they have worked on numerous films together. I enjoyed both characters very, very much. The music was absolutely beautiful to listen to with, you know, little notes of piano and some cello. It was all beautiful. That being said, there were some flaws that I had. First one being, it's a very slow paced film. 
Now, if you're someone who is looking for something more fast paced, a little bit more action and drama, you're not going to get it with Call Me By Your Name. This is a movie where it needs you to get into the characters' minds and to understand where they're coming from and what the risks that they're willing to do to actually um, get to know each other. And for Elio's story, I feel like there wasn't that much to him. I felt like the movie wanted you to know a little bit about each character. For Elio, he's more into music. He's a music writer and he's in love with Oliver. Whereas Oliver, he's more of a doctor. He's an intern for his father. That, that really is all you get to know about the characters. I just wish that there could have been more to actually go behind these characters and to actually give us a reason why we should feel for these characters, how we should feel the way that they're feeling for each other. Another flaw that I had was there wasn't really an obstacle that was breaking up their relationship. What I mean by this is if you've ever seen Moonlight, you can understand the character's struggles to actually coming out of who he is based on the town that he's living and the people that he comes across. You look at this movie and you look at the final, uh, the final act, you start to realize that was it. That was the reason why they can't be together. Now, for some, it is understandable, but to me, I felt like there could have been a little bit more into it. But overall, I can see why people wanted me to go see this movie. It is beautifully shot, well acted, and a compelling story, and some might want to relate to it. And for those reasons, I'm going to give Call Me By Your Name a 7 out of a 10. I'm Matt Fiscioni, and tune in for our next episode of the Fish and Films Moon Reviews. Ciao.